When I did my first gut protocol, I was pooping my brains out. And let me tell you, it was not a good experience. So what is a gut protocol anyways? Essentially what a gut protocol is to help rebalance the microbiome, whether this is getting rid of parasites, healing up leaky gut, rebalancing the bacteria in the gut, or even getting out viruses. Everything can throw off the balance in the gut and everyone's microbiome is slightly different. So there is no, this is the way, or this is the perfect scenario. Just like labs, we have range that we work within, which generally speaking is where someone should fall. For instance, if someone is eating more food, they're going to have more bacteria naturally in their gut. If someone's eating less, they're going to have less. Now the test that I personally really like is GI mapping from diagnostic solutions. GI mapping from diagnostic solutions is my favorite gastrointestinal mapping personally. It tests for zonulin, which is leaky gut. It even tests for things like immunoglobulins, which can be an indicator for if you're having an autoimmune flare up, or maybe even potentially you need to have further testing for an irritable bowel disease, which is much more serious. Now, I will caution you guys that gastroenterologists do not accept GI mapping currently in the medical community. It is accepted in the functional community though. And the reason for this is that it is only a stool sample. So there are feet of intestines in your body and you're only getting a snapshot in time at that one moment. And that's one reason why there could be potentially inaccuracies and they don't have a perfect answer yet. So now the testing comes back and let's say hypothetically hypothetically that someone has SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I'll use myself as an example. I had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and candida overgrowth alongside leaky gut. So what would a protocol look like this? And what are some of the things that you can take to help you with some of those symptoms that you're experiencing so you're not as uncomfortable? And this is what I have been trying to hone in on over the last several years because I was one of those people that had a miserable experience. I tried a natural kill phase for nearly two years, couldn't get rid of it, and eventually I actually had to do antibiotics on the tail end. So SIBO, traditionally speaking, with a functional holistic approach, takes approximately three months to kill off enough of that bacteria strain to get it down, and then you repopulate the gut on the tail end of it. The only issue with this is if strains are very high, it may take more than one kill phase to get rid of it. And this is typical when people have very high strains of bacteria. And I happen to be one of those cases. Now, one of the issues is as you're going through a kill phase, you don't only just kill bad. It doesn't matter if they're antibiotics or natural antimicrobials. You kill off good and you kill off bad. So what happens is, is as a normal bacteria flora starts to reduce down, then it becomes harder to stabilize the bad bacteria as well. And during this period of time, I personally would stick to a low FODMAP diet. The point to it is so you don't make as much bacteria in your gut. Now this is where the complexity really comes in and this is why no case is ever really the same. Sometimes you can't just roll into another kill phase. Sometimes you killed off too much good bacteria where you need to repopulate that good bacteria take a break from killing and then roll back into another kill phase and hopefully that's enough to resolve it. Now, obviously the best practice is you retest to see where your gut is after you repopulate the gut to really tell, did it positively impact me? Did it negatively impact me? Realistically, it's not going to negatively impact you. However, it probably negatively impact your normal bacteria flora. Hopefully the repopulation phase when you're reintroducing some high FODMAP foods, which is going to help to grow bacteria and adding some probiotics in there will be enough to bring that flora back up enough off. That's not always the case. And sometimes people still experience small intestinal bacterial overgrowth like symptoms just from good bacteria being low. So another way that a kill phase can be done, which is traditional medicine and Western medicine is antibiotic approach. And this usually combines one or two antibiotics together over a seven to 14 day span of time. Sometimes this does again, require multiple rounds of antibiotic to get to the resolution. Test, don't guess, especially when you're doing that, because this does kill off a lot more bacteria faster and it can make the back end, which is the repopulation phase, much more difficult because you killed off so much more in such a short period of time. The faster you go, the harder it is to repopulate. The slower you go, sometimes the easier it is to repopulate. So what are some normal symptoms within the first few days? Now this is a very wide range because it goes from 50% might feel better to the other 50% are absolutely miserable. I happen to fall into one of the misery categories. So I'm talking to you guys out there. Hopefully these help you out. Due to the fact that you're killing off, there's two different ways that this can go. Sometimes people get the runs really badly, which something that can help there is Pepto-Bismol, which is actually a coat. It does not absorb, and that's a beautiful thing about it, or even like an Imodium AD to help with some of those runs. This is just a tool in the tool belt. However, Pepto-Bismol is really cool because it does just coat. And the other major negative one would be constipation, which again, I actually see probably more commonly than actually the runs. Now, even if you're on a natural kill phase, don't be afraid to implement something that is from a grocery store like Gas-X. I find the purple pills of Gas-X, which are 
are the extreme ones to be most effective. Now you're killing off bacteria. How does bacteria form? Fermentation in the gut, it's kicking up gas and fumes and that's where that gas is coming from. So that constipation isn't necessarily just stool being backed up, it could just be gas and gas is extremely painful. Another tool that can be helped to soften stool a little bit, which is subtle and it's not a laxative. I do not like laxatives. Magnesium is an amazing way of putting some water into the intestines. As you're going through a gut protocol and the kill phase, symptoms can drastically change as time is going on. Something that I personally love just to settle the stomach down during this period of time is ginger. Now ginger extract or ginger chews work phenomenally well for just settling the stomach down. Another issue that I see all the time is when these kill phases are going on, things like brain fog or reduction in appetite. Another thing that helps with symptoms is just adjusting the diet. Sometimes you're eating too many carbohydrates and you're creating too much bacteria in the gut, which obviously you don't want to completely cut that off and go to only high fat diet and no carbohydrates. I see the extreme dieting create massive issues long-term, maybe not short-term, but long-term definitely. And this has to do with the repopulation phase, which is the hardest phase actually coming out of that kill phase is the most important part. Now that the kill phase is done, rolling into the repopulation phase, which is the most important part to make sure that bacteria overgrowth doesn't come back and that you actually get enough good bacteria back in your gut. Repopulation phases are very different for every single person. Some people tolerate certain foods really well and other people do not. So this is really where elimination dieting really comes back in. It's trial and error. Reintroducing some high FODMAP foods back into your diet to grow some bacteria. A food that is high in prebiotics such as an asparagus or even fermented foods can be phenomenal. The issue with fermented foods though is if someone is still not in a great position and they're having histamine intolerances or allergic reactions still, adding in those fermented foods can drive up histamine response. So probiotics have been added back in, the repopulation phase is done. How do you know if you're good or not? Well, symptoms. How do you feel? Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Some people feel worse when they're done. This doesn't mean that anything was wrong that was done. It could just mean that maybe the repopulation phase wasn't the best for you at that moment in time. Maybe stress was high during this period of time, which yes, stress drastically impacts the gut. So if you were in a high stress situation and also not feeling good from a kill off phase and then also not feeling good on a repopulation phase, well, the odds of you being resolved are probably pretty low and it's probably time to retest again. Usually after about six months to three months of a repopulation phase is a pretty good read on if you're good or not. I've seen people very good for one to two months and then all of a sudden they're not feeling that good after three months and well, it's time to test again just to make sure. See what comes back. Maybe it's only one bad bacteria that came back and maybe leaky gut, right? So you only kill one strain off so you don't overkill on the kill phase. One of the major issues that I see right now within the gastrointestinal space is overkilling on the kill phase. Sometimes it's better just to hit like one strain or two strains that are relatively high rather than killing off as much bacteria as you can trying to hard reset it and catch it on the rebound. That rebound is very difficult sometimes for people to catch. If they weren't in that bad of a spot to begin with, maybe it's not good to poke the bear. So the major three phases to getting rid of that IBS that you've been told that you had would be testing to make sure you know what's going on under proper supervision, go through a kill phase and a repopulation phase. If this is done properly, I usually see about 90 to 95% of people that go through a proper kill and repopulation phase that have tested beforehand come out to the promised land in just one try. Again, this isn't always the case. And I was one of those cases that went through multiple kill phases and multiple repopulation phases before I made it to the promised land. However, I also had issues for literally a decade of my life. This usually isn't one brute force things that leads to gut issues. It's usually a plethora of things adding up over time. It could also be just as simple as food poisoning and that bacteria strain never came back down. If you're looking for some supervision, click the link down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the video and if you found this helpful for you guys. See you guys in the next one. Thank you.